1 Samuel chapter 2. And Hannah prayed and said, and here's her prayer recorded. It's a prayer of thanksgiving. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn. Now, she didn't have a horn. That's strength. When you see a Bible horn like that, that is strength. Is exalted in the Lord. Not herself, but God. My mouth is enlarged. That's the first time that word shows up, enlarged. It's all about God. It's made whiting to praise God over my enemies. That'd be probably the other wife. Look, God's given me a son because I rejoice in thy salvation. It's God's salvation. Somebody is wrong when they say, well, it's my salvation. Well, it belongs to God. God's the one that did it. All we did was receive it. There is none holy as the Lord. That's kind of interesting because there's one particular religion in the Catholics, they believe that their Pope is holy. They even give him the title of Holy Father. Hannah says, there is no one holy but the Lord. That's Jehovah. For there is none beside thee. There's no other God. Though Job 1 and 2 says Satan stands up before God, in the end, in New Jerusalem, there's only going to be God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit on the throne. Neither is there any rock like our God. And that's the rock that gave him the water in the wilderness. That's a sure foundation. Talk no more so excellently proud. Don't be proud. Stop being proud. Knock it off. Let not the arrogancy, that's the first time that word shows up, come out of your mouth. So arrogancy and proud go together. Arrogancy is what you say. You open up your mouth and it's all about your pride. She says, knock it off. Don't do it. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. Knowledge comes from God. Man's knowledge can't match to God. And by him, actions, that's the first and last time that word shows up, are weighed. So God's going to judge by his knowledge. By what he knows. The bow, the bows. That's the first time that word shows up. Bow. This is the first time the word's showing up in her prayer. Of the mighty men are broken. No military strength. Armageddon. Battles where God sent little hornets. God where he sent fire. God where he sent hail. God where he sent an army one time. He sent the opposing army up against each other and they're killing each other. They are stubbled. Are, the they that are stumbled are girded with strength. The weak ones. The ones in God. The ones that are standing for God. They may be few in number, but with God they're great numbers. They that were full have hired themselves out for bread. Famine. And when a famine of, of Lack of food comes. Your money ain't going to do you no good. Now the last time in America had, there was food, but there was no money. And there are places in the world today, there is lack of food. And there's no way to get food. It's a famine. And yet they'll sell your soul out to get food. That's a tribulation passage. This prayer is, is pathetic. I mean, uh, pathetic. prophetic. The mighty men, broken. That's Armageddon. To reach out for bread. The only way you'll hire yourself out for bread is if you receive that mark. No man might buy or sell unless he receives the mark of the beast. And they that were hungry cease, dead. Die. So that the barren... The barren has borne seven, and she that has many children is waxed feeble. Look at Revelation 17, 1. 
Revelation 17, 1. This is all yet in the future. 17, 1. And this is the great mystery Babylon. Revelation 71, and there came out one of seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse seven, the fifth, uh, verse number 15. He says to me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horses are many, are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. All the kindreds of the earth. They're all going to suffer during the tribulation period. They're all going to have to say, do I want to receive the mark or do I want to eat? And if I don't want to receive the mark, I'm going to die. In most cases, the hunger, they don't die of lack of food, of starvation. They die because they didn't receive the mark and they're killed by the Antichrist. She that has born, she that has many children is wax feeble. Mystery Babylon has many children. Catholic Church has many children. They'll be all gone. They'll be all dead. The Lord killeth. There you go. That's God's power. And maketh a lie. God has the power of life and God has the power of death. He bringeth down to the grave. And he bringeth up. That's resurrection. Though one day if I die before the rapture happens, he's going to bring this body up. The Lord maketh poor. I thought poverty. I thought the situation of what you were growing in. No, the Lord. And he maketh rich. So when we harass the rich people, we're harassing God made them rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust. And lifteth up the beggar, that's the first time that word shows up, from the dunghill. That's the first time that word shows up. And you see the valley of dry bones here of Ezekiel. The nation of Israel. They're poor. They're begging. They're in the sewer pot. They are disgusted. They are brought low. They are in hunger. Why? Because they cannot receive that mark if they are truly being dedicated to their heritage as Jews. Because they are not to worship any image or any idol. And that's what that mark of the beast is. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. That's Jesus Christ's throne. That's when Jesus Christ comes. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. So the earth has some kind of pillars. Inside the earth it has pillars. Inside the earth, the Bible says it has gates and bars and hell, and an empty place where paradise was once. He will keep the feet of his saints. Our ground, our standing, our walk. And the wicked, notice the wicked. The wicked, not wicked, the wicked, that's the wicked one, shall be silent in darkness. That's hell, that's the lake of fire. Lake of fire is darkness. That's where Satan, that's where the Antichrist, that's where the beasts go finally, the lake of fire. And in that fire, there's darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. No man that's on their own. Unless you're saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 10, you find Daniel 2 and Revelation 14. The adversaries of the Lord, everybody against the Lord, shall be broken to pieces, trampled when Jesus Christ comes back. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them, that horse, and the blood up to the bridles. Joel chapter 2. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. Second advent. He shall give them strength unto his king. And exalt the horn, again, strength, of his anointed. And that anointed means Christ. That's Jesus Christ. That's Joel chapter 2, Daniel 2, Revelation 14. God, Jesus Christ, will get the final victory. He will divide the nations among sheep and goats and destroy the goats. And the sheep will go in 
after their Messiah, into as the Messiah sits on the throne of David. David seated at, along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Elkanah, Elkanah went to Rimmah to his house. And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. So the child stays there. He's being brought up by the priest. Now we're going to skip a few sections here and come back to them later. Tomorrow, Lord willing. Jump down to verse 18. We're going to leave Eli's sons. We'll deal with them tomorrow, Lord willing. We'll just pick up back with Samuel. Verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen, linen ephah. Exodus 28, 6. Now remember, Samuel is not a Levite. They're of Ephraim. But Exodus 28, 6. Now Samuel is going to be a judge. And they shall make an ephah of gold and of blue and of purple, of scarlet and fine twine linen, with cunning work. There's the ephah right there. Verses 6 to 14. So he is dressed as the priest. He is arraigned as one of the priests. But he's not a priest. And yet he's going to do the office of the priest. Because we're going to find out, Lord willing, later, the, the, the priesthood right now, the high priest and his sons, they're wicked. Verse 19, Joseph. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. So every year she makes a coat for him. And she brings it to him. And she gives it to him. But he's got a ephod on. I don't know what happened to all the coats. His mother cares for him. When she came up with her husband, doesn't serve the authority of her husband, she comes up with her husband to offer a yearly sacrifice. So see, he's still doing it. He's still obeying the law. He is being right by the nation of Israel. And we're just coming in out of the book of Judges. Everyone that did it was right in their own eyes, but this man here, he's doing what he's supposed to do. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman, for the loan which is lent to the Lord, that be Samuel. And they went unto their own house, home. Now, uh, Eli did this before he, in verse, chapter 1, verse 17. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him, and that be for the son. Now in 20, he does it again. He blesses both the husband and the wife. And again, it's about the children. And there's one thing so far you can say about Eli, and there's much to say about Eli. When it comes to Elkanah and comes to Hannah, God listens to Eli's prayer and answers Eli's prayer. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. Six altogether. And she gave one to the Lord and got five back. And the child Samuel, that one specific child, grew before the Lord. And we're going to stop right there tonight. That, that's about Samuel. We're going to pick up Eli and his children. It goes lengthy. And get it all in one study. But you give to the Lord one. And listen to me out. Don't stop the message and say, oh, prosperity to God. So you got to hear the whole message. When you give to the Lord one, be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that ye shall also reap. God will reward you with much. By your want. Now that reward does not guarantee to be here on the earth. Absolutely. Now he will give you and bless you with things of the earth. But if you give to the Lord one. And if you're involved in any form. Whether you give to a missionary or you're involved with a public ministry. And you put that one in. 
When you get the glory, the gold, silver, precious stones, the fact is that there will be people in heaven because you were involved in a ministry of witnessing far greater than what greatness that we can get. She gave her son. God gave back five. Now she got the blessing on the earth, but us, we get blessings from God on the earth, but eternal rewards, crowns, the right to an inheritance in the millennium, gold, silver, precious stones that we will have for all eternity if we do what God tells them to do, if we re rejoice in his word and do his work. There'll be blessings both here on the earth, maybe sometimes. Paul did all that God wanted to do, and he really didn't get much. Paul, the day when he got to heaven, the day when he walks away from the judgment seat of Christ, and the day when we are in, there'll be no more day when we're in New Jerusalem. And the rewards come at that point. 